In this video, I'm going to show you the connections of the DTV Plus system components. I've laid out the components in front of me that were previously covered in the components video. Let's begin with the six-port valve. The six-port valve has two connections to it under the access cover. The first is the eight-pin communications cable. The second is the power supply, which is located on the opposite side of the eight pin. Once you have the connections done, secure the grommets in the slots and close the access cover. The other side of the data cable connects to one of the two RJ12s on the controller. The two and three port digital valves have two communications port. The communications cable can plug into either. The other end of that communication cable connects to the open RJ12 on the controller. The DTV Plus steam adapter has four connections. The first connection is a terminator that comes along with the DTV adapter kit. The second connection is for the communications cable to the DTV Plus controller. The third connection is the temperature sensor. And the fourth connection is an RGA12 connector that connects to the steam generator. The other end of the DTV steam adapter communication cable connects to one of the eight communication ports on the controller. The ambient rain panel power data supply has four connections. The first connection is a 120 volt hardwired connection. The second connection is the communications cable to the DTV Plus controller. This gets connected to the data in jack. The third connection is the terminator. Terminator gets plugged into the data out jack. The last connection is the ambient rain panel. This gets plugged into the rain panel connector. Once all your connections are made, make sure your fittings are tight. The other end of the ambient rain panel data cable gets connected to another one of the COM ports on the controller. The Bluetooth amplifier has three connections. The first is power, the second is communications, and the third one is speaker. The other end of the amplifier communication cable gets connected to one of the communications ports on the controller. The user interface gets connected to the controller by the included coupler and extension cable. This too gets connected to one of the communications ports on the controller. Now we want to connect the controller to a network. We plug an ethernet cable into the ethernet connector on the controller and the other end into a LAN port on a router. And now we want to connect the computer to the same network as a controller. For this demonstration, we're powering our devices with a power strip. Please follow your local electrical codes when powering your devices. The last step to making connections is applying power to your system. Make sure you do this after all other connections are made. Once power is applied, you will see the system start booting and you'll start seeing some lights blinking. Once the system has booted, you can start your configuration via the embedded web page.